Welcome everyone to today's episode of Places People Purpose. Today we are going to finish our look at the amazing country that is Rwanda. I think we can all agree that Rwanda has a combination of natural environment, people, and culture that just draws you in. Let's learn some more about this beautiful place and its people. Based on United Nations projections, the population of Rwanda is over 14 million people and is one of the most densely populated countries in Africa. Rwanda's population has been steadily growing over the years, and this growth has put an increased demand on food, infrastructure, and services. Rwanda has a relatively young population, with a significant portion under the age of 25. This youthful demographic presents both opportunities and challenges for the country's development. The current life expectancy for Rwanda in 2023 is 70 years, which is almost a half percent increase from 2022. Life expectancy in Rwanda has been on the rise, primarily due to improvements in health care and living conditions. Kinyarwanda is the national language and is spoken by the majority of the population. It is used in daily communication and education. Rwanda has a bilingual policy where French and English are also official languages. English has been emphasized in recent years as part of Rwanda's integration into the East African community. The majority of Rwandans are Christian with Catholicism being the largest Christian denomination. Protestantism is also widespread, with various Protestant denominations present. Some Rwandans follow indigenous African beliefs. Rwanda has made significant strides in improving its education system and literacy rates over the years. Education is considered a critical component of the country's development strategy with a focus on expanding access, enhancing quality, and promoting inclusivity. The education system is structured into several levels, including pre-primary, primary, secondary, and higher education. Rwanda implemented a 12-year basic education program, which includes nine years of primary, and three years of lower secondary education, which aims to ensure that all children receive a quality basic education. The government has made efforts to increase access to education with a particular focus on rural and marginalized areas. School enrollment rates have shown some improvement with more children attending school. Rwanda has also made efforts to achieve gender parity in education, and girls' enrollment rates have increased. Universities and technical and vocational institutions have also been established to provide higher education and specialized training. As we discussed, Rwanda is landlocked, and this status comes with both challenges and opportunities. On the one hand, lacking direct access to seaports presents logistical challenges for international trade. However, Rwanda's landlocked status has also driven the nation to prioritize efficient infrastructure and logistics solutions. The country's efforts in this regard have not only benefited its own population, but have positioned Rwanda as a potential trade and transit hub within the East African region. A good example of how Rwanda is working to mitigate the challenges of being landlocked is the construction of a new $2 billion airport 40 kilometers south of the Rwandan capital of Kigali. The airport is scheduled for completion in 2026 and will boast a 130,000 square meter main terminal building capable of accommodating 8 million passengers a year, a figure which is expected to rise to over 14 million in the following decades. Rwanda would like to become an African hub for air travel. A lack of connections across the continent is limiting Africa's untapped potential in the aviation business. Despite boasting 16.75% of 
of the world's population with 1.4 billion people, the continent has less than 4% of the global air market. When we look at Rwanda's economic sectors, one of the more significant sectors is agriculture, and it employs a large portion of the population. Key agricultural products include coffee, tea, bananas, maize, beans, and livestock. The government has implemented programs to modernize agriculture, improve crop yields, and enhance food security. In the area near the Volcanoes National Park where we stayed, potatoes were one of the major crops. We learned that the government had ongoing research programs to promote and identify the best seed potatoes and would then distribute these to farmers in the area for planting. The country has been working to promote agribusiness and increase exports of agricultural products. As you can well imagine, tourism has been a rapidly growing sector in Rwanda and the government has invested in tourism infrastructure and promoted eco-friendly tourism practices. The services sector, including information and communication technology, has also experienced significant growth. Kigali has become a regional hub for technology and innovation. Initiatives like the Kigali Innovation City Project aim to foster a knowledge-based economy and attract tech startups and investments. Rwanda has also been working to develop its manufacturing sector. Initiatives have included in the construction of industrial parks and incentives to attract foreign investors. The production of construction materials, textiles, and agro-processing are among the areas targeted for expansion. Rwanda has experienced impressive economic growth and made significant progress in various economic indicators over the last few years. The Rwandan economy grew more than 9% in 2019, thanks to a strong growth in industry, construction, services, and agriculture. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the Rwandan economy experienced its first recession since 1994 with a 3.4% GDP contraction in 2020. But 2022 saw a rebound in growth of 8.2%. Rwanda's public sector-led development model has shown its limitations with public debt increasing significantly in recent years. The political structure of Rwanda is characterized by a presidential republic system. The president of Rwanda is both the head of state and the head of government. The president is elected through a popular vote and serves a seven-year term. But in 2015, a constitutional amendment was passed that allowed Kagame to potentially remain in power until 2034, extending the maximum presidential term limit. The president appoints members of the cabinet, which consists of ministers responsible for various government departments and functions. The cabinet is responsible for implementing government policies and decisions. The Rwandan parliament is a bicameral legislature consisting of two chambers, the Chamber of Deputies is the lower house of parliament and is composed of 80 members. 53 members are directly elected by the public through a proportional representation system. 24 are reserved for women and two for youth and people with disabilities. Members serve five-year terms. The upper house of parliament is the Senate and consists of 26 members. These members are selected through various means, including local government councils, educational institutions, and presidential appointments. The Senate's role includes representing the interests of local governments, reviewing legislation, and offering advice on national policy. Rwanda's judiciary is independent of the executive and legislative branches. The Supreme Court is the highest judicial body in the country and oversees the functioning of lower courts and ensures the constitutionality of laws and government actions. 
As the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame has been a dominant political figure in the country since he took office in 2000. He played a crucial role in ending the Rwandan genocide and has been praised for his efforts to rebuild the nation and promote economic development. However, his leadership has also faced criticism for issues related to political freedoms and human rights. The Rwandan Patriotic Front, or RFP, is the ruling political party in Rwanda and has been in power since the end of the Rwandan Civil War in 1994. The party played a pivotal role in ending the genocide and has been credited with stabilizing the country and initiating significant development efforts. The party's policies have emphasized unity, reconciliation, and economic development. The Democratic Green Party of Rwanda is one of the few recognized opposition parties in the country. It was founded in 2009 and aims to promote democracy, good governance, and human rights. The party has faced challenges in gaining significant support and visibility. The Social Democratic Party is another opposition party in Rwanda. It advocates for social justice, economic development, and political pluralism. While it has participated in elections, it has not been able to challenge the RPF's dominance. If what you have learned about Rwanda makes you want to visit, then you will be glad to know that Rwanda's equatorial position brings about a consistent climate marked by relatively mild temperatures throughout the year. This is largely due to the country's elevation from 900 to 4,507 meters above sea level. Kigali, the capital city, enjoys a temperate climate with temperatures that rarely reach extreme highs or lows. Rwanda experiences two distinct seasons, a dry season and a rainy season. The dry season typically spans from June to September and from December to February. During this time, the weather is characterized by sunny days, lower humidity, and less rainfall. It's an optimal period for outdoor activities, wildlife viewing, and exploring the various attractions Rwanda has to offer. Conversely, the rainy season extends from March to May and from September to November. While the rain can be intense during these months, it often arrives in the form of afternoon showers or short bursts. This season is essential for nurturing Rwanda's lush landscapes and is a critical factor in the country's agricultural productivity. That's all we have for today, and today's episode concludes our Rwandan experience. If you enjoyed our podcast, please follow us wherever you get your podcasts. In our next episode, we will be moving to the subarctic and the city of Churchill, Manitoba in Canada where the whale and polar bear populations greatly exceed the number of humans. We think you will really enjoy what we have to share about Churchill. So join us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world.